What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Tar Heel Illustrated.com. Or, of course, if you are watching on our fast growing YouTube channel, subscriber count is still going up during the offseason. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me as he always does for our scouting report podcast series, our director of basketball recruiting, and he's an analyst for us, David Sisk. And, David, I mean, just like I said, we're here for another episode of our scouting report podcast series i believe this is the fifth episode we're doing six of these so no far so recruiting jacob no, no all that's a good point recruiting. that's a good point i guess when i say off season i mean when basketball season ends for about a month and then football starts up again ain't much of an off season regardless man but not for you there ain't no off season at all but yeah we're here to talk about cam scott in this one um four star 2024 shooting guard out of lexington south carolina attends lexington high school ranked as a number 33 player in that 2024 class, he's a guy I got to see a couple months ago play. And then David got to see at the Nike EYBL event, Memorial Day weekend up in Louisville. So excited to, to talk about Cam Scott. Before we do that, though, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors. This podcast is brought to you by The Rogue Shop. You guys know we love them. Check them out, rogueshop.com. They specialize in top shelf, family grown hip products. The best in the business, if you ask me. So guys, if you want, if you want quality products, you want to know what you're getting, you want to know your, it's going to, what you're buying it for is what you're going to get. Check them out, guys. I can't, I can't speak highly enough. We got a few people on the staff who use them. My parents actually use some of their products. Fiance does as well. And they're absolutely fantastic. So check them out. I'm going to include a link to their website below rogueshop.com. Make sure you use that promo code TARHEELS10 to save on your order as well. Big thanks to the Rogue Shop once again. All right, David, let's talk about Cam Scott in this one. Um, 6'5", 170 pound shooting guard, has over 10 offers. You know, Tennessee, Florida State, Wake Forest, Virginia Tech, South Carolina, uh, UNC in there as well. And we'll start with kind of what you saw at the UIBL. And you had an interview with him that we ran, I guess, about a, three weeks, a month ago now. Um, and, and I'm going to quote a, something in there to kind of start this one out, as I've liked to do in this series. Let's start with the strengths that he has. And, and one thing to quote you from your interview with him, I think not, this is not a piece that he said, but this is your kind of analysis of him. You said one of his strengths is slashing and getting both feet into the paint off the dribble. Another thing that you said is he's at his best when he can get out on the break and showcase his speed and athleticism. I agree completely based on what I saw at the Josh level classic, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but David, give us a little insight on, on, on uh, Cam Scott's strengths. We'll start out there, and then we'll, we'll kind of move on after that. Well, you know, he's got an offer, and, and, and so do other guards like uh, uh, Trey Johnson, mm -hmm. like uh, Ian Jackson. And the first question most people would have, well, why is, why is uh, Cam Scott, uh, you know, ranked where he's at? And I don't know, remember the exact spot, high 20s, right around 30 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 33 nationally, I believe, right now, yeah. And then why are these other guys ranked one or two? And the difference is right now that, that Cam uh, consistently, he's not shown that factor where he can just – take over no matter who is playing. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't matter that he, he's going to go out and he's going to score 35 or 40 on everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, these other guys kind of have that in her game, but he has it too. He's just not showing you. I, I think he does have it. Uh, when you, you watch him, I mean, there's nothing that he's short of. He's six, five, six, six, can play the two. He's long arms. So he plays bigger than he is. His athleticism is elite. Uh, but just tech quick and stop on a dime, jump out of the gym, can shoot the ball, can put it on the floor. He's got all that. He's one of those guys right now, and it may be something that a coach likes better, that a college coach likes better, and that is it, it's he's a more of a team concept guy, more of a fit guy, fitting in, trying to get everybody going on his team rather than he is get out of the way and let me take over. Mm -hmm. So – you know, if I'm Hubert Davis, I kind of would look at him and say, yeah, I like that. What he's doing now, he can do on a college level for us. If he comes to North Carolina, we're not going to ask him to score 25 a game. Uh, so he's got that. So, yeah, but but as far as tools and, and, and God-given ability, uh, I mean, he, he he's really, really good. And and he's got he's got everything that you want in a player, but when guys rank and rate, they're just looking for that takeover gene 
yeah. that guy has that alpha dog mentality, and and that's what uh, that's what he's going to have to show more of. Now that doesn't mean that he's laid back, that he's passive, none of that. I think he just fits. He's more of a fit that part of the team guy but uh i think as it goes on you'll start to see that because i've seen nothing about him that i feel like soft i just think it's more of a guy trying to fit in mm-hmm. no i hear that i kind of i got that impression a little bit from seeing it at the josh level classic and another thing that i really noticed to him and this is going to segue into what i want to talk about next based on some of the stuff you wrote at the josh level he's just an efficient shooter i mean i, I it, now let me let me let me say this before we kind of dive into it josh level classic was kind of a glorified all-star game in a lot of ways. So it wasn't the highest level of basketball in terms of, you know, had the best players out there, but it was a lot more of a laid back kind of atmosphere. A lot of one V ones kind of ISOs. It wasn't like a real competitive game back and forth that I think you really can see talent shown in that better light there. So I will say that, but he hit a lot of shots. Seemed like every shot he put up went in. And that's what I want to hit on because based on which you saw him in, in, in Louisville, four games in Louisville, 11, 11, average 11 and a half points, three rebounds up there. But I think what was really impressive from some of the stats you had in your article is he was um, 22 of his 32 shots were from inside the three-point line, and he shot 72.7% from the floor, which is an incredibly high clip for a guy like that. And I think you said in there as well, we'll hit on his weaknesses a little bit later, not a, not a guy that's going to light you up from beyond three, but that's exactly what I saw at the Josh Level Classic. He was a guy that got into the paint, made plays, and hit shots. He didn't miss a lot. He was just incredibly efficient in that respect. And it looks like you saw the same thing up in Louisville about a month ago too. Well, 32 shots says a lot. Now, if he shoots 32 times in one game, uh, obviously, you know, it's a whole different story, but they played four games. So he shot, he averaged eight shots a game. So that that's something to remember. A guy that averages eight shots a game, not going to score 30. Mm. So keep that in mind with, with, with the style that he was playing. Uh, but very efficient. Uh, Like he said, gets into the lane. When he gets into the lane, uh, could score uh, easily. Um, But he he wasn't, he wasn't ball centric where he had to have it in his hands. You know, he could kind of score off of it. One thing that he ran into, I saw him play against some zones. So there had to be a lot of ball movement, a lot of player movement. You just couldn't down, clear it out and go. Uh, But one other thing that I liked about him, you know, I think he was three for six, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going back from memory from a month ago. Mm-hmm. He was three for six from three, and he made all three of those. He was three for three in one game. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there was that streaky part of it. You know, he could get hot from outside, and, and then he might cool off. So, I'm sure but, – but some things that I, I've looked at from other reports, from other games that he's played, from other people I've spoken with, you know, that's coming. So, they don't know that – the outside shooting in the long run is, is, is going to be an issue. And I don't think it's an issue now. So, you know, you talked about weaknesses. I don't see a great deal of weaknesses. I just think mm-hmm. he's so good getting to the rim and inside the, the, the arc. He's better at that than he is outside. That other part just stands out. So I would say, yeah, well, he's probably not as good from three as he is in the lane. But mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't call a three-point shooting a weakness. Mm-hmm. Were you surprised at – Last thing I want to hit on real quick. Were you surprised at how? Because I, I was. He's just. He's pretty. He's a long kid. Yeah. Like he, he's he's six five, one hundred seventy pounds, give or take a few in either direction, probably. But he's incredibly long. He to me, he even looked taller than six five when I saw him play, and I think that's an asset, obviously, too. Well, when you get up to him, I'm six two, and you get up to him, he don't look six five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know so, what you mean. So it, it, it's frame and length. And, and, and things like that, because there's some guys you, you and everybody probably listening to this has run across somebody at six foot five and they look like a giant mm-hmm. and, and he really is just long limbed. And, and like I said, he, he uh, the thing, obviously he's going to put on weight, very lean right now, long limb, long arms, long legs. Uh, so it allows him out on the court to play longer, play bigger than he actually is. And you've seen that. And then, like I said, when you see him up close, you're like, wow, you, you may not be quite as big as what I thought you were out on the floor. But th- that's a testament to, uh, you know, how much bigger he plays than he actually is. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Let, let's sit on kind of his recruitment a little bit before we wrap this one up and kind of narrow the focus down on UNC a little bit. Like I mentioned earlier, you, you got to talk to Cam 
asked a few questions. I'll put the link in the article below about UNC and whatnot. Um, can you, I thought a few interesting tidbits before I ask you that from your interview that I thought were cool that he said, it says mom's mom's a big UNC fan. And he said, uh, he did in terms of visiting, I think you asked him about that. He said he plans on going back to UNC to quote him during basketball season. So a little ways away on that, but what, if you know, and what, what can you let us in on and kind of UNC's interest level in him and, and you know, how much does he like UNC? Well, I, and I was looking here exactly. I wanted to make sure I got the quotes right. So I was looking mm-hmm. at my phone, but yeah, um, you know, his, his mom's a big North Carolina fan, uh, you know, and he talked about when he came, how it, it came to a couple of games last year, how it just felt different. Uh, those were the things that he really liked. So it's obvious, you know, North Carolina right now, uh, a lot of people think because of how serious they've been about him and then, you know, some of the things that he said, that North Carolina is the leader. Uh, but I- I've noticed like the MBPA top 100 camps going on right now and South Carolina has been at every game. They're going to make him a big time priority, the number one priority probably in the 2024 class by the new coaching staff. Um it's, um, you know, he, he's from right there in Lexington, right mm-hmm. by Columbia, uh, top-ranked player in, sta- in the state. So, you know, they're, they're going to do like Frank Martin did when he was there uh, with Gigi Jackson. And then there's others in, uh, 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 you know, a couple other visits he's made in the ACC. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a regional recruitment, which happens a lot. So you're going to see ACC and SEC schools alike probably from Florida to Virginia uh, and Tennessee and on up, you know, through Georgia, Alabama, places like that, Auburn teams are going to get involved. So, uh, but, but I I think early on uh, if North Carolina decides, and then you got to remember their offers are starting to go out, Mm -hmm. you know, they've been uh, starting to become aggressive, putting offers in the 24 class. They're identifying guys that they want. So, if Hubert Davis and the staff makes the call and says, you know, he's the guy that we want, he's the shooting guard we want in that class, that's who we're going to go after, then you have to to like where they stand. But, uh, you know, so far they've, they've shown him a lot of love. Yeah, absolutely. He, he did take in a visit to Carolina on January 15th as well. I think we have a few photos of him. He was at a game. I don't remember who they played that night. Um, but when – I know we did picture him uh, in the Smith Center. So, like you said, he's a guy that, that seems to like Chapel Hill a lot. He's been there. Said some really nice things about Hubert Davis and the staff. So, still early on in his recruitment, 2024 kids. So, still a long ways to go with this one. And, and you best believe we'll have it covered here over at TarHillIllustrated.com. And David will be all over it. All right, David, I think it's a good place to wrap this one up, though, man. Enjoyed talking about Cam Scott in this edition of our uh, scouting report podcast series. Again, guys, this is our fifth episode. We're doing six as of right now. I don't know if we're going to do any more. I haven't really talked about it yet, but if you want to see the previous four, we've got go to the playlist tab on our YouTube channel. I'm going to vote. Yes. Start watching. Yeah. I'm about to say there's so many kids to talk about. I mean, and the offers continue to roll out too. Like you just talked about a few minutes ago too. So I think we'll definitely be doing a few more of these. And I think me and David just had that conversation right in front of everybody here. So you heard it here fo- fo- first, folks. We're going to have a few more of these rolling out, and I'm excited to do that. But, yeah, go check them out on our playlist. Watch them through. We've got really a lot of talented guys in there and, and a lot of guys that Carolina are obviously really interested in going after hard. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been David Sisk. Once again, we appreciate you watching. Shout out to the Rogue Shop on this one's for sponsoring our podcast. Check them out, rogueshop.com. Use that promo code. Tar Heels 10 to save. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.